Hi, I'm Vanessa Junta. I am an author and an editor and an all-around like to talk about things person <laughs> and a little awkward sometimes. One of my favorite things to do is talk to authors, right? I love talking to authors about their process, their writing, their you know, their careers, their marketing, all those things. And I really love uh, just sitting down and just talking about stuff. I mean, communication is my love language. <laughs> so so that that's really what I had in mind. I really wanted a situation where I could just have a conversation with somebody. So, and uh, a conversation at a cocktail is really all about us hanging out and drinking together and talking about the stuff. everybody welcome, hey. welcome yay we're so glad everybody's here i see a whole bunch of people out there already awesome awesome so today i'm super excited uh because as you can see i have jesse adams and allison charlesworth from multiverse convention here in atlanta hey y'all hey. hey hey yay hey. so i want to warn everybody the first time in conversation and a cocktail history I am not drinking alcohol. I'm drinking tea. I'm sorry to disappoint you all. I know you are just beside yourself with angst, but it's mainly because I forgot to bring the booze from my house. So, <laughs> and also I've been sick, so probably drinking booze is not my best idea. But I will drink extra booze on the next one. How about that? That's fair. Oh. I'll, I'll double up for you this time. I got your back. <laughs> Jesse. See, Jesse's always got my back, man. What are you drinking, Jesse? Um, just some beer, some Stella. Nice. And how about you, Allison? What are you drinking today? I'm having tea. <laughs> what kind of tea? Um, you know, that's a really good question. And I would answer it if I had any idea, but it was brought to me. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, rage quitting. Fine, Patrick. Go. I, didn't, I didn't know we got to see people's comments and stuff while we did this. That's even yes. better. And if you open in the side, in your little side panel, you can see comments. There's, ah. uh, You can't interact there, but you can see the comments that come up. And then Ooh. Joe will be putting, who is, Joe is obviously our man behind the curtain, and uh, he will occasionally put them up on the screen. Awesome. So for those out who out there who are watching who don't know what Multiverse Convention is, would you share with us what that wonderful event is? Jesse, it's his fault. So he gets to start. <laughs> Go, Jesse. All right. That's you can put that on me. Um, so you want to know, like, are we start with what it is or where it came from? What do you want to do? With what it is. And then we'll go to what it came from. Okay. Um, well, it's uh, we are a convention for fans from all backgrounds. Um, any fans of science fiction, fantasy, horror, gaming, art, and generally just anything geeky at all. That's been one of the fun parts is expanding outside of like traditional fandom, and because we realize that like people have different kind of stuff they nerd out about, right? It could be history or science or uh, fountain pens, you know, whatever it is. The common thread is that there's like there's a, a a strong interest in something that you want to share with people. So that's the point of of conventions in 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 my book, but also multiverse in particular is let everybody get together in an environment where everybody feels welcomed and included, like genuinely included. Um, and it happens every October, third weekend of every October. This year it's October twentieth through twenty second in Atlanta, which I figure most people know. Um, at the Western Atlanta perimeter north, all the stuff said multiversecon.org. So um, that's the quick rundown. The uh, I said a slightly different version of that is it's a really, really, really fun weekend with some of the best people I've ever been around. I, I look forward to it all year long. So same. And just to be completely above board and transparent, <laughs> I'm the programming director for Multiverse, <laughs> which everybody already knows because the people <laughs> who watch this have heard me talk about Multiverse probably in almost every show I've done. So I love that. Yes, I know, right? Because it's so freaking fabulous. Um, so Allison, yes. how about you tell us a little bit about how you guys started this. So you guys started this together, right? As a, as a, as a venture that you're doing together. So how did that come about? Cause I, if I recall correctly, you guys actually were not 
super con people to begin like at the beginning. So no, no. Here? So Thank honest, you know. complete transparency. Neither one of us had been to more than one convention <laughs> before we decided to start a convention, which awesome. sounds crazy. Jump in but... and sleep in, man. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't do anything halfway. Um, so uh, Jesse had gone to a convention in Texas while he was out working on a case there. And uh, I think the, the conversation that we had once we began speaking again, by the way, we grew up in the same town in the middle of nowhere in South Georgia. And he was a couple years behind me. So we weren't really friends, but we knew one another. And then we met up again through Facebook. 20 some odd years later. So um, two people from the middle of nowhere, South Georgia started talking about why at this convention he had gone to, he saw sort of a lot of the same names that you might see science fiction and fantasy conventions everywhere. Right. Um, and we all know the names, we all love them. Um, but we were like, why with all of this great stuff that's coming out from indie people, from just, not the same people over and over, why they weren't represented. Why weren't they there? Where are they? Where are the fans that want to see this? And that was kind of the start of it. Um, Jesse made the grand mistake of telling me that this was an idea that he wanted to pursue. And I was like, great, I need a project. <laughs> and five years later, here we are. <laughs> you had no idea what you were biting off, did you? None, none. <laughs> um, so that was the only convention he had been to. I had not been to one at that point. So my first convention was me volunteering at a local anime convention to see what it was like. Nice. And yeah. how did that go? Uh, well, it was a very large convention. So they get about 40,000 people each year. Um, and I showed up and I was like, cool, I'm crafty. I can help with workshops. And now I am the director of workshops at that same convention. <laughs> <laughs> That's how conventions go in my experience. <laughs> like, yes. you, if you are both competent and enthusiastic, Yes. Somebody's going to put you in a role. Like 100%. You're, not, you're going to get voluntold, basically. <laughs> that's that's yeah. how it works. You don't, get to, you don't get to escape that easily. That's right. But yeah, that was a big part of it that it was not – we actually thought that not having a ton of con experience was exactly like – that was sort of a, a what we thought was a strong point for one to do this because the thing that, that sparked the idea, like Allison said, was – you know, looking around a convention. This is the first time I'd ever been to one and it was super fun. I didn't realize that people got together to talk about this nerdy stuff that, that I'm a fan of. And I was like, so this is a thing I can spend a whole weekend around people talking about this stuff. I never get to talk about. That's awesome. But also then standing in the hallway and looking around and going, why does everyone here look like me? Like mm -hmm. this, this is not everybody. Where's everybody else? Um, and so we thought there's, there's gotta be like, it's gotta be kind of structural. The reasons why that isn't happening at more cons. So we figured it's actually in some ways a good thing that we we know we know how to throw parties we know how to do lots of stuff, um, but we didn't we weren't like really burdened with decades of of con tradition and this is how it's done kind of thinking, so we we tried to approach it in a really fresh way and just say all right how can we build this structurally from the ground up in a way that's going to be more inclusive to a broader swath of of fandom and creators, so. It was, yeah, pretty silly to start something with zero experience in it, but uh, that's one of the first things we did is found people like you and like several other folks who have really helped build this who did have con experience. We're like, we've got the idea here. Let's find some people who know what they're doing to help us build this. And I feel like that's like the best way to go about a large project because n nobody has all of the knowledge. And if you do, you still don't have all of the energy or all of the time. So you've got to have a really good team. And and one of my favorite things, so I kind of browbeat my way into multiverse. I don't know if y'all know that, but the person who was the programming director at the time was hanging out at the Weston Bar at Dragon Con and a good friend of mine who is uh, who does helps with the writing track now, Robbie, he, um, he was like, oh, you have to meet this person. There's a new con that they're putting together. I was like, really? Tell me about this. And he was, he gave me a little spiel and I was like, oh, that sounds really exciting. So I went and talked to this person and I was like, well, I do this on the writing track here and I do this on the writing track here and I know these people and I can do these things. And, and I was like, I would really love to be part of it. And this person had wanted Robbie to run the writing track, but Robbie didn't want to. He just stepped down from being a track director at Dragon Con and he wanted a break. 
Um, so he uh, he was like, all right. And I was and so it, I ended up the right track director because I just kind of bullied my way into it. But, you know, that's and we're ever so glad you did. Yes. <laughs> One of my favorite things about multiverse actually, I think, comes out of the fact that you guys didn't have a lot of background in planning a convention, because there are a lot of things at multiverse that you don't see at cons very often, or some cons have like kind of adapted mm -hmm. some of the things that Multiverse does. So can you talk about some of the interesting things that Multiverse has that maybe some other cons don't have? Some other cons may have them, but but uh, some things. So either one of you, please feel free. Okay, I'll start. Um, so one of my favorite things at Multiverse is we have a really ridiculous meat track, and that's M-E-E-T, meat. <laughs> we always have to specify that. <laughs> you know, yes, I joked the first welcome. year that I wanted to make like some sort of weird logo thing to hang over the door made out of bacon and, you know, prosciutto <laughs> and whatnot. Um, but uh, Gigi Ng runs our meet track, which is like a meetup track, but she turns it into this lovely welcoming space where geeks of all different, you know, backgrounds can meet up and you can find people that you maybe want to hang out with for the weekend. And I've seen so many huge friendships come out of that thing. Mm -hmm. It is amazing. She has turned it into, I, I really, when she proposed it, I didn't understand what she was going to do with it, but I would say it is 100% one of the best things that we have done. I would yeah. agree. I got to second that for sure. Cause it's <laughs> the only thing different about it as a track is that it's uh, yeah. Vegans are welcome in our <laughs> 100%. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's one, one way that it differs from a typical programming track at a convention is that it's so informal. There, there are some more structured events, but there are some that are just like, Hey, everybody with this particular, you know, it could be, um, geeks who have a military background or, yeah. you know, it could LGBTQ plus safe space type of, of meetup. It could be, um, and it doesn't have to be structured. Some of them are, but it's really, it really lets people put their own spin, bring their own energy into the room and, and just have a good time with it in an informal space instead of everything being a panel where you sit and listen to people talk about a specific mm -hmm. topic. Um, and, and yeah, like Allison said, Gigi does a, an incredible job of making that just welcoming and fun. So no matter what it is, you're going to have a good time. There's a lot of people end up just hanging out there a lot of the weekend. I will say it is the best decorated room in the whole convention. <laughs> For it sure. There's every space with stuff in the room. It's fabulous. I love just popping in there just to say hi and see what's going on. Yep. Yeah. If you're looking for it at the con, look for the glowing purple tree. You'll know it when you see it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. um, another thing. So there's there's a lot of, of thought that we put into um, care for for various people, like their, their what their experience might be like, because um, that's something we try to try to keep as a, a really basic, like foundational um, part of our decision making process is who who are we making? Who do we need to make sure that we don't leave out of this? Um, so we have one thing that you see at some conventions, but not a lot, is uh, we have what's, what we call a sensory break room. Um, for there are people who might have um, sensory disorders um, or, or different types of uh, neurodivergences or th things like that that make it where the being in the center of con activity can get overwhelming. Um, and so without having to entirely leave the space, we like to provide a space where people can go where if the light's low, it's kept quiet, there are calming activities to do, you can just go chill and recharge. Um, and a lot of people have really taken advantage of that um, when they needed to without having to feel like they they have to leave, you know, like they don't have to separate themselves from the proceedings. It's just another part of the con. And especially for people who might be coming to con and not have a hotel room on site because not everybody stays on site. We absolutely love it if you do and everybody has a good time when they do, um, especially if you're having a cocktail, then please do. Yes. Um, <laughs> but you know, if you don't have a space to retire to for a little while to get some quiet, it's it's very nice. There are weighted blankets, there are sound machines, there's coloring books. It's just really nice and relaxing. Mm -hmm. yes. there's, there's something sort of intangible that I would point out to as, as one thing that that makes us different than other places. It's, it's so hard to quantify, but there's like you know, if you've been that there's there's a different there's a different sort of vibe in the air as far as the conversations you can have with people and the, the general um, respect and positivity that people offer each other, the, 
the way people interact with with folks is great and I, some of the best conversations and the most laughing i've ever done have been in in conversations over multiverse weekend um because the the group of people that are our our staff who, who make the decisions about who comes as guests and then our people who are our guests and the people who come to attend um everybody just brings so much such a diversity of experience and background and everything that you end up with some of the most fascinating conversations um and a lot of that has to do with just the the how broad the spectrum of people is that attend and i also think it has a lot to do with the um environment that the convention has created because it's everyone seems to be encouraged to have con productive conversations you know not necessarily all work kind of conversations but like there's very little headbutting and you know uh problematic behavior knock on wood <laughs> please go for that um because i mean people are encouraged to allow everyone to have a voice and not all spaces, and not just conventions, but just spaces in general have that, I think. And I think that's one of the strengths of the convention, too. And that, that's been part of the trying to build in inclusion from the start. Um, sometimes I think we actually have an easier time of that because we started with it, right? So it organically got woven into it. Um, and respect and collaboration is kind of the foundational thing for us is mm -hmm. you don't have to totally agree, but what you do have to do is just be nice to each other. Yes. We jokingly have a pitch when people ask if they should attend. It's, is there anything that you are super nerdy about, want to have conversation about, and can you not be a jerk about it when you're talking to people who disagree with you? <laughs> yeah. Easy. <laughs> if that's the case, then you're welcome. There, you're welcome to join us. But it is it's it's i think it's probably fair to point out that there is as as with most things there's a limit to that like we we love that everyone like to, to respect everyone's viewpoints but there's people listening may be familiar with the paradox of tolerance um mm -hmm. we draw a line there sorry if you're going to be disrespectful to other to other people if you're going to treat people rudely or be denigrating to groups of people or or anything like that we, we just we don't, don't just don't don't show up don't do that. It's not going to be welcome. It's part of our code of conduct that we it's just, we're not going to have it. So that's where the line gets drawn on that. And I think that actually contributes to people feeling more able to have those productive conversations because they know that the extreme viewpoints that are harmful to other people, sorry, don't want they don't there. They're not going to be, they're not welcome. That's one of, one of my favorite phrases was the one um, John Picasso uh, coin when, uh, so John Picaccio was our first artist guest of honor, the very first multiverse. And at closing ceremonies, he basically grabbed the mic from Jesse because <laughs> he wanted to talk for a minute. And then he went on for 10 minutes talking about what an awesome thing it was. But what really struck me and the phrase that I continue to use is that he said, you don't have to look for diversity here. It's baked into the wallpaper. Which, I don't know how many people bake their wallpaper, but it <laughs> sounded really cool. Mm -hmm. So I use that a lot. And another way that's reflected is the amazing con suite. So yes. talk to us about the con suite, because that also is very um, diverse in food choices. So it is. Um, so we have our resident kitchen witch um, who came along. Um, oddly enough, she was a homeschooling mom in my homeschooling community and uh, knew that we were starting this thing. And I said, you know what we really need is just someone to run a con suite. And she was like, oh, really? Do you? <laughs> and just jumped right in and started planning. So our kitchen witch serves full meals all weekend long. Um, they are prepared in a latex free environment because we have latex allergies in the in the house they are inclusive of vegans vegetarians um they can be kosher mm -hmm. she really mm -hmm. kind of looks through um and if you mm -hmm. contact her if you email her she'll make sure that whatever you need whatever your dietary issue is mm -hmm. that she will accommodate you she um, literally went and made an alternate salsa to go with the tamales last year because someone had a nightshade allergy yeah. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I didn't even know you could make a salsa from carrots and whatnot, but it was fantastic. I, I was so stunned. Cool. So 
she is an absolute wizard at what she does and she makes the space very welcoming. Um, I know that we had a few people who had um, uh, mobility issues and she made sure that food was brought down to them. She just is all around willing to do whatever is needed to, to make sure people have a good time and that they eat well. Um, full, full meals, which is, I think, a little different than a lot of conventions do. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When we post, keep an eye out if people follow us on social media and stuff. We'll, when the menu is ready for this year, we'll post it. And it is tantalizing. And it's as good as it sounds. We can promise you that. It's it, Whatever it is, It's just, it tastes just as good as it looks on the menu. Um, and that's and that's included with the, the price of admission. We, mm -hmm. we try to really offer a good experience. And there sometimes folks don't necessarily have a lot of cash to pay hotel prices for food or don't have, they come in from somewhere else and don't have the ability to leave campus, so to speak, and go go hunting for food. So we wanna make sure that nobody's gonna go without, you know, being able to eat and eat well. Yes, while they're there. I love that. So I wanna just talk, and I know we've been talking about a lot of the things that make multiverse different, but there are two other things I wanna talk about in relation to that, and that is specific to tracks. Now, most conventions will have a writing track and they'll have a science fiction track and a fantasy and a horror track and stuff like that. Um, but even Joe made a post about his mission this year is to participate in the create track. So you want to, uh, you want to tell us about the create track? Sure. Um, so this is a boon from my volunteering at that anime convention. <laughs> uh, because I stayed and continued to help with the, the, uh, the workshops over there, um, their senior workshop director has come to Multiverse and helps run our Create Track. Um, in Create Track, you can do anything from, I know this past year they were crocheting jewelry with beading. Um, they made jewelry out of old comic books. I believe that there was a how to make electronic music um, right. workshop. Um, with Alex White. And then they also taught uh, a session on calligraphy and they are amazing at it. Um, LED clouds, did, did we do that? Oh, we did LED clouds. So uh, a programmable cloud that will, you know, change colors for you that you can hang or put, you know, on the, yeah, I know. How did I miss that? <laughs> there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot it's of, amazing. it's mostly like make and take stuff, I think is, is yes. the, the terminology. So and they, that runs throughout the weekend. There's also open crafting. So some people like to just, if they don't go to the sensory break room if they want to chill, some people like to do something with their hands. So they'll go grab some crafts from the open and crafting area and just work on, you know, to color something, make something. Mm -hmm. um, but the actual workshops, there'll probably be, we may do advanced sign up this year. I don't know. But um, <laughs> yeah, a lot of stuff you can make and take and just a huge variety. Like like they were saying, it's, it's a, you know, from calligraphy to music to programmable LED clouds to, jewelry you can take with you to stuff that we haven't even thought of yet. Like the, that's the thing is that people from outside in the community suggest something that they know how to do and know how to teach people how to do. So it could be anything and it'll change from year to year, but there's plenty of opportunity to go sit down and have somebody who knows what they're doing, teach you how to make mm -hmm. something cool. And by the end of it, you get to leave with what you made. So yes. that's a lot of fun. Honestly, if you can't find something to do at multiverse, you're just not even trying. <laughs> So the other track that is uh, that is different than most other cons is the learn track, which is our academic track. So how, what goes on there and how does that work? So that, uh, like you said, it's our academic, uh, academic track and um, RJ Joseph runs that and is, is uh, just incredible with it. Um, that is where, okay, so if you're thinking of like academic presentations, that can sound a little stuffy when you first hear it, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not what this is. This is These are intended to be presentations anywhere from 15 minutes to I think 40 minutes max, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, these are presentations about something and they can be tied into history, folklore. They, they are of an academic nature, but they are tied into geek culture in one way or another. Um, and they're, they're one of the I guess requirements or one of the things that we ask for in these presentations is that they be accessible to the lay public. These are not presentations mm -hmm. that are made for other academics in a, in a super niche discipline. These are presentations made for the, your average con goer to be able to go sit down and learn something really cool from someone with expertise. Uh, and we've had some, some fascinating topics like the, the, um, the feasibility of actual mermaids to like, uh, deep folklore of uh, like the history of the of portrayals of demons in uh, in geek culture or like, or like fictional history. 
it just runs all over the place. But I swear, when you read the titles of the topics, once we post the stuff in the learn track, you'll want to sit there all weekend and just listen to these smart people yeah. tell you cool stuff. See, I spend most of my time in the writing track room, which is right by the learn track. So I could just like run over there for 15 minutes and listen and run back. So um, we do have a couple questions out there. I want to start with Daniel's question. Uh, Daniel asks if we have party rooms at Multiverse. Not in the sense of these are very specific rooms to which you should go to party. The whole thing is kind of a big party. Um, and if you're looking specifically for later night hangouts, um, there is a huge party that always happens in the bar area and then outside on the patio. What we have at the Westin is this really great um, uh, patio with fire pits um, and people just gather in the couches there and chat and hang out. Um, we also have late night programming. Um, Marcus Haynes has been instrumental in, in making a lot of really cool things happen. Um, what was the, the one that was that was really funny was the hill that you would die on. So what sort of slightly controversial, you know, thing do you have in your mind that I will defend this to my death? But it's got to be geek related, right? Geek like, related. Like Star yes. Trek versus Star Wars. Exactly. Like exactly. Yes. Um, yeah. There's the monster mash where you have okay. to mash, to, you like have monsters go head to head and who would win and argue, make your argument for it. Um there was an alien, what was the alien? Alien, alien autopsy. Thank you. Yes. Alien <laughs> autopsy. Yeah. All so, these things in, good. Nope, go ahead. <laughs> all, all the late night programming ends up being super fun. Like that, all of it is, but the late night stuff is where that's where they kind of pack in the, all right, let's cut loose. You know, main programming is done for the day. Mm -hmm. Let's just talk and have fun. Everybody, you know, some folks might've had a couple of drinks. Let's just have a good time with it. Um, and yeah, there's, so there's the bar and the patio and people do have, like, there were people that had parties in their suites and in their rooms last year. Um, we don't, as long as people obviously respect the hotel and don't do anything dangerous, we'd love for that to happen. Um, we don't, I think in this, if you're asking in the sense of, do we have sanctioned set aside rooms? Like Allison was saying, you know, we don't do, we don't plan parties ourselves because we've got enough going on already, right. um, <laughs> but you won't be, you won't run short of stuff to do late at night. Like yeah, you that happen yourself if you want. On Saturday nights, we have a dance party. On um, uh, we also have uh, we have burlesque. Not every year, but we have burlesque. Uh, we've had karaoke, right? Karaoke, Joe. We've trivia. had uh, trivia. Yeah. We've had the most fun and ridiculous uh, book author readings you will ever experience. And I'm not going to say anything else about it because if you want to experience it, you have to come, but it is fun and ridiculous and silly. 100%. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so there, there, while there are no, there's no specific, Hey, go up to room XXX for, you know, a party Saturday night. There's a lot of partying happening at multiverse. You're always going to be able to find something to do. That's actually probably the chief complaint, I think, is that <laughs> people can't be in two places at one time. Yeah, she's yeah. not exaggerating. That's that that literally is uh, uh, yeah. the only uh, like the only complaint that we've really gotten is like there's there's too much stuff and I can't pick, which yeah. is is kind of in a way. Sorry to t sorry about this, everybody, but sort of a programming goal in a way is that during every programming slot, we want you to have at least at least one difficult decision to make, at least <laughs> three things that you have a hard time picking between because. That means you're always going to be entertained. It's a feature, not a bug. <laughs> and also, I want to point out too that for folks who don't like, you're, we're talking about parties for folks who don't drink. I have not seen any problem with people feeling like they can fit in. You don't have to have an alcoholic drink in your hand to hang out with everybody. No one's going to judge you for that yep. at all. I don't think any of the things that we have in any of the rooms have any kind of alcohol component. There's alcohol. There's a bar, a cash bar available at the dance. Uh, the the party on Saturday mm -hmm. night, but I don't think that there's any kind of alcohol component to anything else. So, um, never required. Yeah. No. So, uh, Joe had a couple questions and y'all, if y'all are out there watching, please feel free to drop your questions in the chat because we are happy to answer questions and you've got the co-producers here. So <laughs> Joe has a two part question. What is the best advice you got about starting a con and what is your best advice for others who want to start a con. I think the best advice we got was build the team and then let the team do their jobs. Um, so yeah, um, 
neither Jesse nor I, like we have said, um, did conventions before this. Um, we could throw a party, we could put on an event, um, but we had not done a convention. And if you threw me into the writer's track and told me to do Vanessa's job, I would flub it very, very quickly. Um, <laughs> Vanessa, however, has been doing writer's track at different places for a long time. She is a writer. She is an editor. She knows what she's doing. She takes her job and she does it. <laughs> and she does it wonderfully. And we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> um we, we have been extraordinarily lucky with the team that we have. Um, it is a group of incredibly talented people. Um, and they take their jobs and they do them so well that we don't really have to think about them, which is the best thing. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I agree with that. That was, that was fantastic advice to just get the right people, which we, we could not have done. I, I really don't think we could have done better. The team's incredible. Um, yeah. Another good bit of advice we got was to take much longer to plan the first con than you think you need to. Um, we've seen people uh, since we started try to you know have the idea, decide they want to um, start a convention, and to figure like, well, let's throw it six months from now. Do oh. not, do not. <laughs> we uh, we knew that we needed when we first started talking about it. Uh, we started planning in earnest around in the fall of 2017, and we gave ourselves two years to plan and prep the first convention. And had we gone any shorter than that, it wouldn't have been the experience that it was. Like it really, if you haven't done it before, you may not understand, might not know why it may seem like a long time to plan a weekend event for something this complex. It takes that long if you want to do it right. Yeah. Um, I mean, you might be able to do it in 18 months. I don't know, depending on your event, but don't. <laughs> you know, the, the typical, the typical advice for planning a wedding is a year. And yeah. that's like a one day thing without like eight tracks to play. Right. right. Yep. We have just to, to clarify for everybody. We, if you look at the actual number of, we have 10 tracks running simultaneously, plus the dealer's room, the gaming hall, the con suite, everything else. Art show. Art, Art show. Room. All of that happening. And just in the track rooms alone, we end up with, what do we have? Something 170 something separate programming events. Over the, it's insane. 170 or plus different things that, that are, that are, individually planned out um and then not including the other stuff i just listed so yeah it's it's extraordinarily complex and that's i think the second part of that was like what would you say not to do was that the second part it was uh what advice would you give someone who oh. wanted uh, to start a con but you can hey if you want to say what not to do that's a good that's a good piece of advice um i, I think just personally what I, the one of the first things i would say to somebody is if you want to if you want to start a convention ask yourself why you're doing it. Like mm -hmm. you need to have a good reason because like we've, we've still talked about this with Joe before we, and we've, we've said it in other places that we know there were already conventions in Atlanta. We didn't think that we didn't think the convention world or the, or the, the world of fandom needed another convention. We thought it needed a different convention. Um, so you gotta, if you're just, if you're going to duplicate something that's already out there, ask whether that's a thing that you should be doing. And if you are doing it, then I would say start from the beginning, making sure that you don't get too caught up in how things have always been done, because mm -hmm. there's a lot, there's a lot of chatter in fandom over the last several years about, um, you know, conventions kind of tending to get older. Like the, the scene started to feel stagnant to a lot of folks from what I've heard. And I think a lot of that was just when you see that conventions have been around 30 years, 40 years and so on. And they're doing the same thing they were doing 30 or 40 years ago. And in some of the events they hold, the, the activities you can do at the convention, if it's the same as 30 years ago, that might be great. might be the most fun thing ever. But your attitudes toward things, um, it, it can those can't be the same as they were 30 or 40 years ago because that leads to gatekeeping, which is a huge thing that we are very much against. We think people should just be allowed to like what you like. You know, that's another thing to, to answer your earlier question about what's a little different about us is you do not have to be a hardcore fan of anything. You don't have to have ever seen a Star Wars movie or ever seen a Marvel movie, ever read a fantasy novel. Does not matter. Are you do you just want to have a good time? Like, are you maybe a little curious about tabletop gaming or anything or not? Do you just think our you think our logo looks cool and you want to come check it out and see what everybody's doing? That's enough. If you want to be here and you're cool to people. That's really all it takes. We're, we very much do not believe in gatekeeping people for how long they've been a fan of something or how deep their knowledge is or anything like that. It doesn't matter. 
So I think examining, being willing to examine those ideas and, and whether or not you're making it a really welcoming place for people is probably what I would direct people toward if they were starting a con. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. Um, yeah, I think that uh, the idea that like everybody is really nerdy about something mm -hmm. like, you know, something it can be a television show. It can be art. It can be writing. It can be books. It can be an author. It can be an author's world. You know, like there's something that every person is super nerdy about. And that's what we want to see at Multiverse. So, exactly. yes, I love that. Yeah. So uh, Joe prompted me to remind everybody because I want, well, actually, no, I'm going to remind everybody. Joe didn't say anything, but the idea of being prompted made me think, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons so that you can always be updated on Go Indie Now content and everything. Yes. Thank you, Joe. Uh -huh. for that up. So, but what Joe did, uh, did remind me is to talk a little bit about what's coming up with uh, Go Indie Now and Multiverse, we've kind of paired together a little bit. Do y'all want to talk a little bit about that? Oh, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think we don't know, Allison. If you know, then then please stop me and give details. I don't. I don't know. I don't think we know a ton of these. I may. I may be the one who knows most of it. <laughs> I, I you definitely do. Yeah. Um, I would like to say here, though, that Joe has been coming to Multiverse since, I believe, 2021 and is the most fabulous human ever. And we are so pleased to partner with him to do anything, whatever Joe wants to do. If he's like, hey, you want to come do this? Yeah, I do, Joe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I trust it's good content. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So what we are going to be doing between Go Indie Now and Multiverse is we are giving but multiverse staff, like uh, directors, directors, um, assistant directors, even volunteers, any anybody really who wants to uh, wants to come and talk about the show, we're going to give them a voice on the Go Indie Now Network. In addition to that, the guests, as as many people know, we've we've uh, selected about half of our guests so far. The other half will be selecting in early April. And um, we are giving all of them an opportunity to come and interview with one of the um, Go Indie Now hosts. There are multiple hosts uh, to talk about not just the convention, but also their own stuff, right? So it's going to be this cool partnership, and we're going to be doing a lot of stuff like that leading up throughout the year, leading up to the comp, uh, to the convention. That's going to be so exciting. I'm so excited, y'all. Yeah. So um, I'm hoping to get our guests of honor on this show. So we'll see how that works out. We'll get, we got to get them to sign up for the dates that they want. And then uh, everyone else will be kind of divided up amongst the different hosts. So yes. Do people know who our guests of honor this year are? Well, I don't know. I imagine they probably don't. Would y'all like to share? <laughs> sure. Allison, you want to or want me to? You can each do one. Um, <laughs> all right, we've got, uh, so we announced them at closing ceremonies last year. They're up on the website now. Um, the two that we've announced so far, there may be an additional announcement coming in the not too distant future. Um, but as of now, we have announced a, a local um, just mainstay of the convention scene and of the science fiction, fantasy, horror uh, genres, a, a publisher, somebody who's just one of the most tireless workers out there when it comes to writing, publishing, selling, editing, just doing the whole thing. Milton Davis, um, if the folks have seen him around the, the con scene. Uh, he's a fantastic panelist. He's just all around, you know, we, we, we think it was time for him to be recognized for everything that he does and, and is going to keep doing. The guy never slows down. Um, and he's so gracious. He is so oh, yeah. gracious with his energy. Mm -hmm. Stop by his table. He will have a, a table selling his books um, in, uh, in the dealer's room. And you'll want to stop by because there's, he, he never over pitches, but he knows how he will put that book in your hand and you'll leave with it. <laughs> and you'll leave happy that yeah. you left with it yeah. it's <laughs> it's not a pressure sale it's a oh crap i really need this I, this is a need right now in my life so i actually the the last time i saw him at a convention i realized that i have literally bought his entire catalog <laughs> and he had one book and i was like i don't have that one that's it so yeah it excellent I know. Isn't that a gorgeous cover? Oh my it gosh. Is. 
I love it. And he, by the way, has something in almost every genre. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. he has so many different things to choose from. Anyway, he is an amazing fella. Um, yeah. And also incredibly a dapper dresser. I always love teasing him and Gerald Coleman, the two of them, that we're just going to do the Gerald and Milton show and they're going to do fashion for us. But they're going to be our fashion they, icons. They have not agreed to do it yet. <laughs> we'll work on them this year. That's right. Um, so yeah. our second guest of honor that we have announced so far is Rebecca Roanhorse. And we've been trying to get her for a while. Yes. We, have, <laughs> we have been contacting her on an annual basis for some time. And usually we have a scheduled conflict. So this year, I believe the wording of the email was, hey, this is our annual check-in. <laughs> <laughs> and we actually got back a, you know what? I have those dates available. Oh. So I, if you have not read Rebecca's work, she is an absolute just delight to read her mythology and just the way that she presents her worlds is amazing. And she's got amazing covers. Like one of actually one of them was a, um, a Picasso cover. I'm not sure. Is, is it that one? Okay. I think she may have had one more that was a Picasso cover. Maybe but, one or two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. And she's, she's got uh, new stuff coming out all the time. She's written in the star Wars universe. Um, She's writes stuff for the Rick Riordan uh, imprint. She's she's got her own um, series that she keeps going, the Six World series, and the current one, like the cover you saw there, is Fevered Star, the second one in her Between Earth and Sky trilogy that she's currently working on. Um, she's really building a fan base fast. She kind of came on the scene. I mean, she's been around for a while, but really hit the scene hard with a, 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 a short story Hugo win not that many years ago. Was it like mm -hmm. six, seven years ago? Yeah, it was um, with, an, with an absolutely hard hitting story. Um, and since she's won Nebulous Hugo's Locus Awards, won the Best New Writer Award at, at the uh, at Worldcon, just she's got stuff optioned by I'm looking at it right now, stuff optioned by Amazon, Netflix, AMC. Currently, she's written for Marvel. I mean, just yeah, all over the place. She's incredible. And she's also a lawyer, you know, in all that spare time she has. So you know, <laughs> hey, right. It's, yeah. it's kind of amazing how many lawyers have turned to writing science fiction and fantasy and stuff. <laughs> I feel like there's a correlation there. <laughs> there's a need for escape for sure. Yes. <laughs> yes. So for anyone uh, who doesn't know, Jesse also is a lawyer. So oh, there you go. Class. <laughs> <laughs> as, he, as he downs the yeah, I was going to say, drink. that was drinking, good timing. Drinking my lawyer juice. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, feel free to ask questions again, but I have another one. So let's say, somebody's watching this and they're like, you know, that sounds really cool. Oh, I think I can swing that. So when they come to multiverse, what can they expect? A new attendee, never been there before. I would recommend come to opening ceremonies. Um, we cover a lot of stuff like that. That'd be a great way to start out. First thing you'll see though, if you want to talk about like when you, when you get there, first thing you see is you're going to run up to, uh, to registration Um where you'll meet our wonderful registration director and probably some other folks. You probably see me and Allison, maybe Vanessa, running around. Um, it's it's uh, not hard to start meeting people right off the bat, uh, no matter how social you are. Um, but if you come to opening ceremonies, which happens early Friday afternoon, uh, we go through a lot of what's available. We really try to run down for new folks what uh, where to go, what to do, what your options are, um, important information you need to know, and. <clears throat> um, once you've got that, you know, you've got, you've got your badge on and you've been to opening ceremonies and then we kick it off from there. Allison, what would you say people can expect from, from that point on if they haven't been before? So if it were my first time, I would actually head over to the meat track because Gigi is in there and she will make sure that you know what's going on, where to go, and that you feel comfortable. If you did not come with a group of friends, if you're coming as a single just person by yourself, just showing up, You'll probably meet people in the room, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It's a super social place. It's, um, like I said, so welcoming. And Gigi just makes everybody feel nice and at home. Um, that would be my first thing. Um, mm -hmm. When you're at the registration table, pick up a schedule. We usually have some printed ones and a QR code so that you can pull up the app or just pull up a paper version, you know, a, on your phone version of the paper. So you can start making notes of where you'd like to go, what you'd like to see. Um, check out the gaming hall. Um, so we have at Multiverse two levels of programming um, on the, the conference level where registration is and the horror track 
the fantasy, sci-fi, writing, create, learn, and meet, and the art track currently, but we'll see and if the that room. What's that? And the dealer room. And the dealer hall with the art show in it as well. Um, and create or author's alley now. We're calling it author's alley now because it will only be made up of our author guests. Um, on the second floor is an area with the gaming hall, the gather track, which is the main programming, which is where you will attend opening ceremonies. And then uh, the play track, which is programming about gaming. Um, I recommend running over to the gaming hall, maybe doing a Mario Kart trial, time trial or something like that, finding some people to play a game with, sign up to play a few games. Um, it's a really great way to meet people. Um, and if you don't know how to play it, there are plenty of people there to teach you. <laughs> yeah, learning a game is actually having somebody show you how to play their favorite game is a great way to get to know folks. It really is. Yeah. And you can always, you know, you go browsing around the dealer's room and the art show. You're going to meet those, the, the folks that are in our dealer's room selling cool stuff. Easy to talk to. Trust us, they want to talk to you. <laughs> so oh, yes. easy to strike up a conversation there. Um, same thing with the author's alley, you know, swing by there and meet some of the folks There's, who are on our You cannot alley. avoid the author's alley. You, you literally can't. walk through the author's alley to go anywhere on the main floor That's except meet. <laughs> by yes. design. Yeah. In fact, right as you pass the registration table, you will see a giant sign that says Falstaff Books with a big rainbow flag on it. And you will see John Hartness sitting there trying to sell you all of the books. But so. <laughs> if you don't want to buy any of the books, he will sit there and talk to you he about the just, books talk to you about whatever yeah yeah whatever. he also is really into wrestling so if you wanted to talk to him about wrestling he's here for that <laughs> nerd out together sure. that goes back to the whole idea that everybody's a nerd about something that's the thing is all you're really if you're new there you're there for a reason and there's somebody in the building you may not know who they are yet there's somebody in the building that wants to talk about the thing you're really into <laughs> it's, it's just a matter of finding them and that's another thing that i've literally done that at cons before just kind of go browse around wherever for us it would be like the patio in the evenings or something just kind of walk through see what conversations you overhear i can't tell you how many times i've ever heard someone mention a book i like or something like that i'm like hey are you talking about so and so and then i got a friend for the evening you know? yes and i think that actually is a really good thing there's a lot of people who struggle with social anxiety and things like that yeah. one of the one of the things that i really love about multiverse is that it's very rare to have private conversations, like super okay. private conversations. I mean, some, sometimes it happens. I mean, obviously, you know, so two people are eating dinner. You don't want to be like me and grab a chair and come sit with them because <laughs> that's just rude. Um, but like th this whole idea of you overhear them talking about a book and you kind of swing around and say, hey, I've read that book. It was fabulous. What did you think of it? Those are welcome. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to be like, what are you doing talking to me? Everybody's going to be like, they're going to nerd out with you. Yep. So I think multiverse, I, and it didn't actually strike me that particular aspect of it until you said that, Jesse, um, was that I think that, um, I think that a lot of times people have a lot of feelings about whether they should, and they're going, oh, should I say anything? Should I not? Should I? At multiverse, you can safely say something, you know? Yeah. And that goes back to that that anti gatekeeping thing. Like it's just a general. It's just kind of in the air that gatekeeping is not cool. Like just let people enjoy stuff and don't don't be down on somebody for not knowing a thing. They might you know they, maybe they overheard the you mention a book and they don't know what you're talking about, but it sounds cool. It might be your favorite thing in the world. The way to deal with that is to say, oh, that's my favorite book. Let me tell you all about it. You're gonna love it. Not to say, oh, you haven't read it. Well, you're not a real fan. You know, that's. Oh, you haven't read it. Let me tell you about it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's the way to do it. At all times, we have we have the the choice of whether or not to, uh, as Allison brought up on a panel at Saga Conference this weekend, whether or not to follow Wheaton's law. <laughs> <laughs> you always have a choice, and we really prefer you just choose to not be a dick. Yes, please don't be a dick. <laughs> I mean, you can be a dick. I'm not your mom. I can't. I'm not telling you what to do. You can be a dick. But there are going to be consequences. Yeah, it's not going to play well. That's that's the thing is the the the, the vast majority of the people around you are not going to appreciate that. So yes. um, just be nice to folks. Yes. But you're right. It is it is easy because of that atmosphere. I think for people who are, are not necessarily, I mean, we all get a little shy in certain circumstances, you know, and some people are more shy than others. But we really do try to make it a place where either by going to specific places, like Allison mentioned, the meat track, or just by the, the overall atmosphere. If you come in there shy and if you come in there by yourself, the hope is that 
within a few hours, you're, you're, you're starting to feel welcome. You're starting to feel warmed up and like you belong there because again, as long as you're, as long as you're respectful and nice to other people, you do belong. Yes. Oh, amen, yes. Daniel. Amen. Hey, exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we talked about how much programming there is. There's so much programming and, and anybody who's been to like Dragon Con and a few of the other kind of bigger conventions knows how crazy it can be to try to get from one place to <laughs> another place. But we don't really have that problem. I mean, number one, we're only in one hotel, not five, like Dragon Con. <laughs> but, um, but a lot of cons only give you a little bit of time in between panels. Mm -hmm. And we're not like that. No. We very specifically built in an extra 30-minute pad between each panel. And we actually close programming down for, I believe it's an hour and a half around dinner time. So everyone has a chance to eat and mm -hmm. y'all eating and hydrating and getting enough sleep is so important. So yeah, we, we want everybody to have a whole lot of fun. We also want everybody to still be healthy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Please care. Yeah. And I love that too, because then you don't have like that run on the bathroom. You right. can wait 10 minutes before you go to the bathroom. Yep. You know, there's not a huge line. If you've got to run up to your room, you forgot something, you, you yep. need your water bottle, you need whatever, you need to, you know, run to the bathroom because you had your water bottle. Um, <laughs> you know, you've got time to do that. And that, I think, really takes a lot of stress off. It doesn't feel like you're, it doesn't feel like work, you know, right. like you're going <laughs> I've, I've been places where the programming is just back to back to back and I never can make it to the dealer hall. Um, I never get to see the art in the art show and we have a fantastic art show. Like our mm -hmm. artists are top notch and most of them actually show up and then hang out somewhere nearby. So not only can you see their art, you could talk to them if you mm -hmm. want to. None of them are going to make you talk to them, but they're there. And there's nothing better than being able to actually talk to the artist about why did you create this? What were you thinking when you did this? How did you do it? You know, yes. um, it makes you happier when you, as you can kind of see behind me, I have all the art. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it, it, there's nothing that makes me happier than just hearing the artist talk about it and then getting that piece of art, bidding on it and winning it. And then I'm like, oh. <laughs> Well, I, mean, I know I believe, them. <laughs> I believe Patrick says said that he got one of your original paintings at Mulhamers. He did indeed. He was actually my very first art sale ever. So oh! I have a super soft spot. He's a lovely, lovely human just all around anyway. But yeah, he, really <laughs> he, he bought my very first sale. He was my oh, very first sale. So yes. he owes me a red dragon. So that's that's his Ooh, reminder. All those dragons are cool. Jordan Con. <laughs> so he's still. Yeah, I have one. Actually, it's at the house. Yes. Oh, you got a multicolor one. Oh my God, I got a rainbow one. Isn't he awesome? <laughs> I love him. I yes. currently have a, a teal and teal and peach one, but those are oh, not my colors because he owes me a red one and he kept selling yes. my red one. So sorry. They go fast. They look awesome. They I know, so they're cool. fabulous. I'm super <laughs> so excited that, to get my red one. <laughs> so that, that half hour break you were talking about in between panels. Another cool thing that does is that lets you, like that contributes to the social environment we were talking about because- when a panel gets out, it's not everyone rushing out and running to get to the next thing. You can mill around a minute and talk. You can talk to the panelists about like maybe they mentioned their book and you get, you know, maybe you want to get a copy and get it signed or whatever. Or maybe just, you know, talk with other people who were in the panel about what came up. And it just, it's it's more leisurely like that. But but trust us, there is still plenty of programming. <laughs> like yes. We're not shorting, not shorting anyone on programming. We're just oh. making sure there's enough time in between um, yes. for everybody to you know, socialize and not feel rushed. And that, that also was a little bit of when we were first looking at the very idea for this is we realized that, okay, there's these giant conventions, Dragon Con, for example, which at the time was bringing 90,000 people or something like that. 80,000, I think, right before the pandemic, the last one was just over 80,000, I think. Yeah. Um, and there's, if that's, if that's your scene, wonderful, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Nothing, nothing against them for you for being a big convention. Not everyone's, not everyone wants to deal with that because like you might, you can have to walk, miles to, to get to your next thing. And it's also stressful. It's the fresh of people. It's it's stressful. Yeah. It's, it's expensive. So we realized there were with with that con having been having grown up from small to so big, there are people who love the convention scene that want to still have a good time, but want a little bit more like more of an intimate, not mm -hmm. so stressful, not so overwhelming kind of experience, which is you know, there are a lot of people who want that. We're we're people who want that. Like yes. 
we don't we don't really go to the mega cons much. Yeah, I know a number of people who just stopped going to Dragon Con because it just got so big. It was yeah. just so big. I mean, it's still a great time, it, and sure. absolutely do it. You know, it's like you can do a lot of stuff at Dragon Con that you cannot do at other places for sure. Um, but yeah, I think there's there's space for all of us. Mm -hmm. You know, is what it comes down to. I think so. Yeah. All right, so we've got about five more minutes. And we've really been like talking the heck out of multiverse. It makes me happy. Yeah. So um, tell me, so Allison, you yes. do art. What kind of art do you do? <laughs> what, do, um, you like do? what do you like about it? So I play with inks mostly. Like that's mm -hmm. my major art thing. Um, I really, really love super saturated colors. Um, and my art's all about just what I'm feeling at the time. So I don't actually create art right now when I'm upset or sad because it, it looks upset and sad. <laughs> the one that Patrick got was a super happy one. It's all nice and bright and yeah. Um, I have not been creating for a little while and that is my goal actually for the next few weeks is to get back to, to making some, some happies. So yeah. I'm hoping you can, cause there's, mm -hmm. I, I will vouch for her stuff being very cool. I have a, a large colorful <laughs> piece. It's, it's bright, colorful abstract, which is like, that's what I like but to have on the wall. It just, you know, contributes to the atmosphere. You can't see it, but I have a big one hanging over my couch right here of hers and it's very, very cool. So I hope you get to make them stuff again. Me too. And Jesse, what do you do when you're not lawyering or multiversing? <laughs> um, well, we're kind of always multiversing. You know, that's a, as a that. now. It's, we're, <laughs> there's not really not a day when we don't do something on that. Um, I'm actually doing less lawyering now. I started a new job today um, as, yeah, as the uh, COO of a nonprofit here in Atlanta that feeds, that uh, covers the weekend uh, gap of food insecurity feeds hungry kids over the weekends that rely on the school systems for their meals during the week. They don't have that support during the weekend. So um, we're um, we make sure that they get food to eat over the weekend. So that's what I'm doing this week. And, and from now on, yay. <laughs> what do you do to relax, to chill out? Like, are you a gamer? <laughs> like, that's really what I was going for. You know, Allison has art that she likes to create. What does Jesse do? Do you play games? Do you, what do you do? I play, I play some do games. Go out and, do you go out and like dance like Magic Mike on the weekends or what? Yes. Yes, he does. <laughs> that was, uh, all right. I guess that's coming out for the first time now. Yeah. <laughs> my, uh, my stage name is Duke Silver. There is a saxophone involved. Um, <laughs> I guarantee you none of you want to see this show. But it's good for me. Oh, I don't it's know. <laughs> I feel like there are several of us who would pay to see this show is what I'm saying. A hefty amount. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. I, I, uh, I do play some, uh, <laughs> thanks. I appreciate it. That's like, I feel like I should be like, put up a little a tip button on the screen right now. Like yes. taking requests. Uh, no, <laughs> I like to, uh, I do play some video games. I'm just replaying, uh, the latest, uh, horizon game. That's a lot of fun. A lot of reading. Um, I really a lot of I actually enjoy planning for the con. Like I spend some some of my free time working on multiverse stuff because I actually do find it fun. It's exciting. It is fun. Um, to yeah. the point that I have to tell him to stop messaging me because I'm trying to relax. <laughs> <laughs> Not now we can wait. Um, and we go to we go to other conventions too. We were just at uh, at Saga Conference in Winston Salem over the weekend, uh, volunteering there. We do that, you know, promotional tables and stuff like that. Go to different places. Love traveling when I get a chance to. Um, and then it's it doesn't happen nearly often enough. But meeting up with the multiverse folks like that I know through the the con world and everything, uh, IRL in the, the in this area, like you know, off in the off season when we're not at con. Um, that's one of my favorite things actually about the con is that I. 99% of my current actual friend group is made up of people that I've met in the last five years through this yes. um, and expect to be friends with those people for a very long time. So yes. um, yeah, that's, that's my relaxation, spending as much time with y'all as possible. And with his dog that does not look like a real dog. She looks exactly like, I don't know if for anybody I'm friends with on Facebook, I posted one recently. It, it, my dog is Falcor from the never ending story. Like it was, it was, that is true. Uh -huh. <laughs> I have seen the photos. <laughs> yeah. I've seen the photos. I love that though. Yeah. One of my favorite, one of my favorite things about multiverse is very much how connected everybody is with each other. And one of the things that 
<laughs> one of the ways I think that that came about, we're, we've only got a couple more, well, we don't really have a couple more minutes, but I do want to mention this because I want people to know that it happens. Uh, Multiverse has both a Facebook group and a Discord. And during the pandemic, we started doing Friday night happy hours on Zoom. And they have since moved to the Discord because it's more, it, it's, it's easier logistically. But every Friday night, you want to hang out with some multiverse folks, you hop on the Discord and we are there. Right? With I drinks mean, or not with drinks. Right. Either way, it's totally welcome. <laughs> no set topic at all. We just have, we get on around seven and hang out until the last person's off of there. And some of the best, like, especially so, during the pandemic, some of the best friendships and some of the most absolutely off the wall, I mean, ridiculous. fully off the rails conversations I've ever been a part of have been on those Friday night calls. Yes. 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 Absolutely. All right, y'all. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on my show and talking to us about multiverse. This has been so much fun. Yay. Oh, thank yes, you, thank Joe. You. Yes. Thank you, thank, Joe. You. thank you, Vanessa. Yes. So, thank you, Vanessa, for having us. Yay. And y'all don't know the call sign here, so I'm going to do it myself. So whenever you're in the multiverse, it's always time to go any now. Mm -hmm.